So we could sit here and endlessly talk about how the Xbox Series X offers insane value for the money, but at the end of the day, if you can't beat PC nerds online, then what is the point? Games such as Call of Duty Warzone, Apex Legends, and Star Wars Squadrons not only support crossplay, allowing console players and PC gamers to play in the same lobby, but they also support 120Hz refresh rate mode for the Xbox Series X. At least two of them do, that is. And to be honest, with those sort of frame rates, not only do we have a a huge advantage of those who might be playing on previous gen consoles like the Xbox One X, but also a good deal of PC gamers who might only be playing on a 60Hz display. So let's see how the Series X does when it really counts. So firstly, the TV or gaming monitor that you're playing on is the big factor in whether you'll be able to play at 120Hz in the first place. If you only have a 60Hz display, gaming it up to 120Hz simply won't be an option. The monitor that I'm using here is the 4K LG 27GN950, which can run up to 160Hz at 4K, but that's only over DisplayPort 1.4. This monitor actually does not have an HDMI 2.1 port, which the Series X requires to run at 4K 120Hz, but 1080p 120Hz and even 1440p 120Hz are still fine over HDMI 2.0 and to be honest that's what most 120Hz enabled games will be running at. So with the LG 27GN950 up to a 1440p 120Hz signal is capable over HDMI 2.0 and since this monitor also supports FreeSync that means that we don't get any screen tearing if we drop below that 120fps target. Alright so here we go dropping in Feeling like a little boneyard drop just to start us off here. And I will say immediately, it does feel quite responsive. I mean, we're not getting the full 120 hertz experience. I, I would definitely have traded off some resolution to get the full 120 hertz. But yeah, definitely no complaints here sitting around uh, 100 to 110 FPS. One thing that is definitely apparent though versus the kind of full PC experience is the FOV that you cannot change on console, which is a huge bummer in my opinion. This is a cross-play game at the end of the day. So the fact that there is no FOV slider to get that kind of obviously wider field of view and more dynamic and faster feeling game, that's in my opinion, I feel like that is a huge advantage on PC. And so far the mouse and keyboard are actually feeling quite good too. It doesn't feel like there's you know any acceleration or smoothing or anything like that going on, which is really good. You can also adjust your sensitivity just like you can on PC. But yeah, this tighter field of view will definitely take uh, at least a few minutes to adjust to. Alright, this guy's gonna push, I think. So we're gonna just armor plate up. Alright, I'm not sure how we got that. <laughs> that guy was pretty unhappy about that. Alright, there's a guy in here. This might be done. He might be trying to bait me. Yeah, okay. Well, that's Call of Duty Warzone for you. People just hold angles like this all day. I mean, it doesn't matter if you're playing at 60 hertz, 240 hertz, or 5000 hertz. You just can't beat that, I guess. You're done here. You guys just came out sprinting. Okay. Let's see if we can get some loot here, maybe. Oh, there is a guy in here. You know what? We're gonna try and get a loot here. Oh no! <laughs> Oh my god, man, just got dude. So, these are some gunfights I just don't think I would have won at 60 hertz. Like, when the game is moving so quickly and there's so much happening, that high frame rate definitely does give you a bit of an advantage, to say the least. Alright, but now for some Apex Legends, and unfortunately, to my demise, this game does not support keyboard and mouse, so I'm going to be stuck with a controller for this gameplay, so we'll see how I do. Uh, I haven't used a controller to kind of game with in so, so long, so you guys are going to see how bad my aim is with it. But uh, one thing this game does have, which I absolutely love, if I can get into the settings here, is an FOV slider. So I complained about this so much in Warzone, how you're only stuck with like, I think the default is like 70 degrees field of view, and man, that tightens things so much. 
it really makes the game feel so much more juddery and almost as if it's playing at a lower frame rate, which it's not. We've got the frame rate counter in the top right here, 59 to 60 FPS. When we bump that up to 110, which is the max for this game, it almost feels as if the frame rate is higher. So uh, yeah, I appreciate that quite a lot. And another unfortunate thing here with Apex Legends is that it hasn't really been updated to support the more powerful hardware in the new consoles. There's no 120 FPS mode, despite us using a high refresh rate monitor here and enabling 120 Hertz in the display options. We're still running at 60 FPS, which is a real, real shame. All right, first impression straight away. I can definitely feel the difference here compared to Warzone running at, you know, upwards of 100 FPS. Attention. This running at 60, I mean, it's kind of alleviated because you're using the wider field of view, but man, it is a noticeable difference. I think gun, gun fights are going to be a bit tough. Reloading. But yeah, 60 hertz feels, eh, feels okay. It's definitely playable, but yeah, it's definitely nothing compared to how Warzone feels. One thing that is good to see though is that despite our wider field of view, we're not getting any FPS drops and I'm not really sure if that's a problem on like PS4 Pro or an Xbox Xbox One X, but yeah, we're pretty stable here at 60 FPS. Well, that's not too bad. Guess we had that controller aim assist kind of helping us out there. Man, looting though feels so slow. Incoming. Ah! I'm dead here for sure. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right. Likely all console players still. I definitely, I don't think it's putting us in any PC lobbies yet. My account definitely isn't ranked high enough. So, but we'll play another one. See what else we can do. I downed an enemy. They spotted me. I'm taking shots. <laughs> Point blank. Not bad, pretty easy lobby, much easier than PC, but yeah, not bad. You can get a win here. I don't, I don't know how many PC players were actually in that lobby either. Most of it just seemed like console players. How many kills we got? Yeah, eight kills, 1800 damage, that's okay. All right, so we're jumping into Star Wars Squadrons here, and out of all of the Xbox games that I've tested, this one runs the best, and it's by a pretty significant margin. So on a 4K 120Hz TV like the LG CX, this will actually run at 4K 120Hz. I've never seen any other game, console game that is, run at those specs, those kind of advertised specs that Microsoft kind of threw into the Xbox Series X. It's not the full 4K, like it's not true 4K. The internal rendering resolution is a little bit lower. Overall, it's just much better performance than what you'll see in other games. Big reason for that is that most of the game is just a giant skybox. Like there's not much uh, geometry and model detail to render out here. Uh, I guess here there is, but still the majority of what you're looking at is a skybox. And that's why the performance is so, so good. 
Graphically as well, this is a really, really good looking game. Now in this game, you actually have two different modes. So you have a favor performance mode, which will shift it to 120 FPS. As it says here, the game will reduce the internal rendering resolution to target 120 FPS. And I can confirm that it's pretty much 120 FPS locked. Then you have favor resolution, which will drop down to around 70 to 75 uh, FPS if you have a monitor that supports variable refresh rate. And then you'll get the full native resolution of kind of what you're playing at. So in this case, we're playing at 1440p and we are getting a true 1440p image. But for sure, without a doubt, switching to favor performance is definitely the way you wanna play this game. Uh, even on a controller, it feels instant. Like the inputs feel very responsive. And really apart from the maybe extensive graphics customization that you have on PC, there really isn't much separating the Xbox Series X version of the game running here at 120 FPS compared to PC. Sure, you do have those graphics customizations, but I really don't think you need it. The Xbox Series X version looks plenty good enough. Titan 2, standing by. Titan 5, fine now. Oh, yeah. That's nice, nice. But yeah, 120 hertz definitely feeling amazing in this game. Uh, like I said, we are getting the full 120 FPS, which is great. So everything feels super, super responsive. To be honest, the experience here doesn't differ too far from PC at all. I mean, I play on PC with an RTX 3090 on this exact monitor. The only difference is like, you know, we're playing true 4K on that system and the refresh rate is a little bit higher, say instead of 120 FPS, I'm getting closer to say 150, 160, but we're comparing a $500 gaming system to a few thousand dollar gaming system at least. All right now, this is a beautiful looking map. Colors, the contrast, just a real pleasure to play on. So in terms of getting the full PC gaming experience, where does that leave the Xbox Series X? Well, I think in terms of the hardware inside here, there is definitely enough compute power to provide an exceptional gaming experience. We saw that with Warzone and with Star Wars Squadrons. In some cases, you can actually be competitive against PC players in crossplay titles. But in other cases, you will actually just be held back by the game developers. No FOV slider in Warzone, for example, and then plainly no 120 FPS mode or mouse and keyboard support in Apex Legends. These are defining game settings that these new consoles are capable of enabling. Not to mention with crossplay in full force in these games, it feels wrong not to even the playing field as much as possible when you're going up against PC players with these advantages. As for now, the gaming experience on the Series X is really quite an enjoyable one, especially given the context of how much you would pay for this versus a fully kitted out gaming PC. However, there is still quite an improvement to be made in the majority of games that you'll be playing before you're going to have the kind of advantages that a PC player would have. And I would love to know your thoughts on this down below, so please leave me a comment. As always, a huge thanks for watching and I'll see you all in the next one.